ChatGPT needs no introduction, but for now it is lacking an API, a way to use it from the terminal or through a programming language. What if I told you there was a sneaky little project that provided you with an API for ChatGPT? That's what we're gonna be looking at in this video. So this is the project here, ChatGPT Wrapper. What it does is it wraps ChatGPT inside a web browser that you can then talk to with your terminal using Python. So we're just gonna follow the commands to install it here. So because it's Python, it's using pip. So we're just gonna install it using pip system-wide. Now, normally when you install something with Python, you use a virtual environment, but I don't want to do that. I want this to be available any time on my system whenever I open a terminal. So on this new terminal here, I just paste in the command and it all just works. So that has also installed the dependency playwright that we need to use. Playwright is what automates our browser for us to provide us with the API. Let me show you Playwright. So here is Playwright here. It's a very popular project, mainly used for testing web apps, but you can also automate web browsers with it. It is written by Microsoft, but that's okay because it's open source. Install a browser with Playwright functionality. You just type Playwright install, and then we're gonna use Firefox like this. It says your OS is not supported, but that's because I'm using Fedora and it's downloading the Ubuntu build. This will be fine and will work. And now we need to configure chat GPT. So you just type, you have now a binary called chat GPT and you just type install like that. And now it opens the browser and you have to log in using your chat GPT credentials. This will extract the session token, thus enabling your browser to log in without you needing to provide credentials all the time. So you will only need to do this once, hopefully. So I've gone ahead and done that. And once you've logged into ChatGPT on your browser, you see here, click through all the dialogues which we've done. And once that is achieved, exit and restart this program without the install parameter. So we've closed it there. And then we just restart it using ChatGPT. So we just run it and look, now we can engage with ChatGPT for the command line. What shall I call a video about ChatGPT? We can ask it a question, it responds, it streams like it does on the browser. Wow, look at this. So this is just this is just normal chat GPT. There is nothing really special, but now we can interact with it from the command line. So this is wrapping the web browser. Very cool. So there's multiple other things you can do with this command line, but we're not really going to talk much about the command line. We can type question mark to get a list of commands. So most of it is just like, for example, we can log to a, a file on our local system. Session is pretty cool. Uh, stream session is, is how you will like reset it if things haven't gone well if it breaks for some reason stream now this disables the streaming and also marks up documents for you so it gives you some nice formatting but you have to wait you know the response doesn't come word by word so yeah look if I type session it refreshes it appears to be usable if I type stream and then say can can I see a for loop in Python now nothing will happen for a while because it's not streaming, drinking some lovely fresh orange juice from oranges that I picked myself from my garden. I bought it from the co-op. Here is what happens now that we type stream. So streaming gives it an opportunity to mark up afterwards. So you see here, this has Python syntax highlighting as well as bolzing programming things like what ChatGPT would normally do. So if you want the, syn if you want the markup, you have to toggle it using the stream command. And there is many others there. The real magic with this project is we can use it in Python as a library, which means we can make anything we want with it. So I'm just going to write an example. So on their website here on the GitHub, they just have a very simple example. So if I paste this in, um, because we've installed it globally, we don't need to install it from a virtual environment. And all this is doing is making an instance called bot of chat GPT of the chat GPT class. And then we can just ask it hello world here and it will print the response. So if we ask it, how do I turn a Python function into an API? And then we run it. So here we go. So it's printed our result for us. So that took a while and that's because it doesn't stream it directly, but here it has told us what we could do. So we could turn this example.py, this function, oops, we could turn it into anything we want. We could make this an API. We could make this a Discord bot. We could even, now this is something I want to do personally, which might be, maybe it's not slightly ethical, but 
If I get an email from someone at work who I don't like, why not have ChatGPT just auto-reply to them after 30 minutes? So they think I'm on the ball responding to them quickly, but also I'm elegant. You know, you could fine tune this. This is what we could do if we wanted that. If emailer is X, then content is emailer dot email. The content of the emailer's email. And then the response is an F string. As an emailer, which I would be, write something in reply to this content. And that would obviously be replaced. However, this will not work because email doesn't exist. X is not a thing. Content is that. If I write this file, it's going to error. There we go. warnings. <laughs> That is, I would say, pseudocode of an example. But just one more thing, let us make this useful. So we've imported sys here, and the response is bot.ask, whatever argument we give the program. So we basically rewrote the shell. So we can go python example.py, write an email to my boss, asking for a race, like this. So you see there, now we have, it's even written the subject, dear boss's name. Give me more money. Think of the possibilities you could do with this API now, you've got it. I'm gonna write my auto email responder that just every so often asks my boss for a salary increase using slightly different text. Why not? Go be mad.